Okay. It's game time. Shoot! Get down! Hasta luego. I have this. Feast on this! What up, it's Shankster94, and welcome to my ultimate weapon showcase of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. So as always, I have a whole prologue to get through before we begin going over the weapons, so let me provide a timestamp to get you straight to them if that's all you're here for. Just know that the entire showcase still includes commentary. So, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was the very first Resident Evil game I've ever beaten personally, and even though Resident Evil 2 is the GOAT game of the franchise for me, I've played through Resident Evil 3's story more than any other classic game. The replayability is unmatched, with several different paths leading to different outcomes, with a new RNG mechanic affecting the placement and selection of enemies, as well as weapons and ammo. Unlike the previous two games, there is no obvious exclusivity between versions of Resident Evil 3 when it comes to weapons specifically, so you can play any port and still get the same weaponry, as I'll be depicting here. Another new addition heavily involved with weapons is gunpowder, which can be utilized to make various types of ammunition using an item exclusive to Resident Evil 3 Nemesis called the Reloading Tool. I'll be sure to cover all the different combinations of gunpowder throughout this showcase. Now, just like the previous showcase, I am playing the Source Next PC version of Resident Evil 3 with the classic Rebirth patch, which allows playing on the latest operating systems. The polished textures of both two-dimensional and three-dimensional elements are thanks to the work and dedication of the Seamless HD Project team and other modders who've contributed to modernizing the classic trilogy. And I'll be using the SHDP mod to produce the highest visual quality showcase possible. I'll provide a link to their Resident Evil 3 page in the description. So now to go over my carefully polished routine for showcasing the weapons of this game. This will serve as a preview of my step-by-step -step process of going through the weapon lineup, and I will use clips from my original weapon review of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis so you can compare the visual quality. Before production begins, I will sort the weapons into categories loosely based on weapon classes and place them in a specific order roughly by firepower. If there are multiple weapons in a category, then they will be showcased in order of appearance. RE3 Nemesis contains a knife, semi-automatic pistols, machine guns, shotguns, a magnum revolver, and a few explosive weapons. To begin showcasing, my first step for each weapon will be introducing it in the inventory. If the weapon happens to be the first firearm of a category, then I'll first check out the ammunition of that weapon class. My next step will be inspecting the weapon and reading its in-game description. Afterwards, I'll provide a photo of the weapon's real-life counterpart if applicable. A disclaimer for all weapon showcases I do is the source of my IRL weapon information. I use the Internet Movie Firearms Database, a weapon wiki for movies, TV, and video games whose pages can be edited by virtually anyone, which brings about the possibility of incorrectness when claiming the IRL versions of game weapons. Weapon enthusiasts and gun nuts watching my videos may feel enticed to call out those inaccuracies, but there's nothing reasonable I can do once the video is uploaded except mention it in the description or comments. From there, I'll divert to showing the location of the weapon, whether you start straight off with it, find it at a specific location in the game, and potential conditions required to obtain it, unlock it as a reward by meeting certain criteria when playing or completing the game, or combinations of all of the above. I'll also mention if the weapon is used outside the main story in this game's lone minigame, The Mercenaries. After all that, we'll finally see the weapon being handled by the main characters of the game. I'll proceed to test fire the weapon in a safe, enemy-free area with a close camera angle that I like to call the hub, which I'll give a brief tour of after this prologue. While test firing, I will add an optimized slow motion effect to one or more of the shots fired, with machine guns getting both slow motion and fast motion effects, and explosions getting a reverse effect on top of the slow-mo. After emptying the weapon, I'll perform the satisfying reload animation. If a character of the opposite gender can also wield the weapon, I will show it with them as well since there's a small difference in aiming stance. For these classic games, I'll also show off a rapid firing trick that can be performed with most weapons. From there, I'll announce the enemy I've chosen to test the firepower of the weapon on. When it comes to enemy testing, I'll usually try to use the same enemy for multiple weapons in a category. I'll start with the most abundantly basic enemy for the weakest weapons, then as the firepower increases, I'll switch to more powerful enemies to equal the playing field. 
This will ensure that I keep enemy testing relatively brief and the shot amounts in the single digits since the real focus of these showcases is the weapons themselves, not their damage to health point ratio or their accuracy to their real life counterparts. After reviewing the results of the enemy test and comparing them to other weapons of the category, I will declare it concluded and may share a couple of extra details if applicable, including past appearances of the weapon from earlier games and in-game cutscenes depicting it being used or fired. This will segue into the next weapon of the lineup and the process starts all over again. However, there are four weapons in this game that I'm going to have to overview twice and that's because they all have an enhanced version. Two of them involve the use of gunpowder, while the other two are circumstantial, but I'll get into more details when we go over those weapons in the actual review. Once all of the weapons have been overviewed, I'll add the total number of weapons in the game to the overall total number of weapons in the series covered so far, and then announce the next game in the series lineup and close out the weapon showcase. Alrighty people, I cannot appreciate your patience enough if you stuck around all this time, and I hope you're well informed and full of anticipation. Let's move on with my ultimate remastered weapon showcase of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Let me give you guys a brief tour of what I've chosen as the hub for this game's ultimate weapon showcase. So I decided to do something different from the OG review. This is the inside of the graveyard cabin. This angle specifically, as you can see, Jill faces straight on. It's a very good vertical angle and it's relatively close. Just like Resident Evil 2's review, there are other potential angles, but the lighting wasn't the best or the vertical angle wasn't the best. So yeah, I ultimately decided this spot, while lighting probably could be better in some other areas, they're not going to be nearly as close. So I made a compromise between lighting and closeness for this one. So yep, this is going to be the hub. Now when I switch over to Carlos for certain weapons, I will use the same hub as the OG review, the hospital reception room. And for other characters that I'll occasionally go over, I'll just use the most convenient angle possible. All right. So to kick off this weapon showcase, we're of course going to start with the non-firearms. And once again, the only non-firearm in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis is a knife. Oh, so, so quick little thing here. Since Resident Evil 1 and 2, they swapped the combine and check buttons and it's throwing me off a lot. I am so used to the check being in the middle and not in the bottom. So forgive me for that. Dagger knife for self-defense. All right, a very quick, to the point description of a knife, which is fine. And yes, this is a dagger type of knife. Here's a real life one, just for a quick comparison. There you go. So Resident Evil 3 Nemesis is the first game in the series where you don't start straight off with a knife. So I'm actually gonna record a location clip for the knife. The earliest you can find it is the first item box you come across in the warehouse save room. So let's open the box. And there it is. And that's how you get the knife with Jill. Now you could do the same thing with Carlos when you switch over to him. Just find the first item box and you could use the knife. And it should be mentioned that Nikolai has the knife in his loadout in the Mercenaries, Operation Mad Jackal. All right, so here's Jill holding it in game. Let's get her pose with it. Bring about the same pose from Resident Evil 1. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out. And of course, I'll show hitting the wall as well. Now let's try the quick shot maneuver with this because you could actually do it with the knife. <laughs> you get quick slashing with that. All right, so basic usage of the knife. Now I'm gonna go ahead and test it on the most basic enemy, a standard zombie. See how many slashes it takes. Oh! <laughs> 
Okay, so I tried a variety of different stances there from body to leg to head, and it ranged between 5 and 13 slashes amongst all the tests to defeat a standard zombie, with Jill at least, in hard or heavy mode. Now, let's switch over to Carlos and see if we get similar results. <sighs> Okay, so amongst four different zombies, one of them being a crawling zombie, it took between seven and ten slashes. So yes, there is likely no damage difference between Jill and Carlos, but there is health point differences between these sets of zombies that I tested on. Personally, I think Jill is a little more proficient with the knife, with the way she holds it and how fast she uses it and everything. That's just my opinion, though. All right, well, that's going to go ahead and conclude the knife. Now let's actually turn on the heat for this weapon showcase, removing into the firearms, and as usual, I'm starting with the semi-automatic pistols. The first of which is just called the handgun. But being the first of its class, let's first go over the ammo. Handgun bullets. 9x19 nine parabellum rounds. Used for either the M92FS Custom or the Sig Pro. So those are the two standard handguns in this game, by the way. And as you can see, this is the same exact ammo box from Resident Evil 2. As I said, get used to that red box. Now, as you can see, I have another set of ammo here, the Handgun Bullets E, which stands for Enhanced, so let's go over those real quick. 9mm parabellum rounds added with powerful powder, created with a reloading tool, used for either the M92F or the Sig Pro. So, these came to be because one of the awesome features of this game is the use of gunpowders when you combine it with the reloading tool. As I said in the prologue, these gunpowders could be utilized to create various types of ammunition. So, gunpowder A is exclusive to create handgun bullets. And as you can see, I got four different types of gunpowder here A, double A, triple A, and two Bs and one A. Now, these specifically create handgun bullets. However, you can combine them with other gunpowders, and of course, you'll get different types of ammo. But for now, I'm focusing on only handgun bullets. Now, another thing to know is as you keep creating ammunition, your skill level increases over time, and you could start creating a little bit more ammunition every time. So a single A can create between 15 and 23 handgun bullets. A double A can create between 35 and 53 handgun bullets. A triple A can create between 55 and 83 handgun bullets. And finally, the 2B and 1A can create between 60 and 90 handgun bullets. Lots of information for you there when it comes to utilizing handgun ammo. Once you combine Gunpowder A eight times with the reloading tool, it'll give you the opportunity to create these, the enhanced handgun bullets. With a single Gunpowder A, you can make between 17 and 20 enhanced bullets. With Double A, you can make between 39 and 46 enhanced bullets. With Triple A, you can make between 61 and 72 enhanced bullets. And finally, with BBA, you can make between 66 and 78 enhanced bullets. So there you go. All right, that's enough about the ammo and the gunpowder. Let's finally go over the first gun in this category, the handgun. M92F Custom, a custom handgun made for stars. It uses 9mm parabellum rounds. Okay, so... This is our actual first introduction to what's known as the Samurai Edge in the Resident Evil franchise. While this game doesn't explicitly call it the Samurai Edge, there is a postcard file that you can acquire at the RPD that's from Joseph Kendo, Robert Kendo's brother, and he explains that this is dubbed the Samurai Edge, and it is made specifically for the Stars members of the RPD. So it's really neat that we finally get to see it for the first time. Now this model that you see here is not not an upscaled model of the original icon in the game. I think this is a real life image of maybe like a Tokyo Maori gun and they just superimposed it into the game. Not a big deal, but it does lose some of the genuine originality because of it. But anyway, this gun at base level is based on the Beretta 92FS. Now, of course, Tokyo Maori did make an airsoft replica of this gun as I'm showing here. 
So that's neat. Well, we've never seen the actual Samurai Edge in previous games. We've saw something close to it with the Beretta 92FS Enox that Chris and Jill could use from Resident Evil 1 and just Chris from Resident Evil 2. That's the closest thing to it. All right, that's enough about the gun. So Jill starts straight off with the handgun on her person, as you can see right here. However, if you begin the game in easy mode, she'll instead start with an assault rifle, and you have to find the handgun in the first item box you come across. Check it out in game, here's Jill holding it. Nice seamless HD quality. And let's of course get her pose with it. All right, now let's go ahead and test it out, why don't we? All right, and of course, let's try the quick fire maneuver with it. Nice. Okay, now, while there is this enhanced ammo, I'm going to treat these kind of like I treated the custom parts of Resident Evil 2. I'm gonna test the weapon out first with regular ammunition, and then I'll come back to the hub and test it out with its enhanced ammunition. So for now, let's go ahead and test the handgun with regular ammunition against standard zombies. So amongst five different zombies, it took me between four and nine shots. There is quite a variety. Between different enemies and modes, always use my tried and true formula. Add and subtract five to the initial amount of shots that my test took, and it should cover all your bases. Now that we tested the handgun with regular ammo, let's return to the hub and check it out with enhanced ammo. All right, so now let's combine the enhanced handgun bullets with the handgun. Oh, apparently I have to empty it first. So, something to be aware of. So, now it's the M92F Enhanced, so let's check it out again. Enhanced M92F Custom. It is loaded with enhanced 9mm power barrel rounds. I could have told you that. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and check it out now. It's still the same gun, so it's not like there's a real life variant with different ammo. Well, there can be, but I can't pick that in real life. So let's just go ahead and test it out with enhanced bullets. So it's got a lot bigger recoil and slightly slower firing speed. But the reload is exactly the same. Now I can also do the quick shot maneuver with this as well. All right, so let's test this bad boy now on the same zombies. Okay, really nice consistent test there. Amongst five zombies, it took between two and four shots from the enhanced handgun to defeat them. So yes, a definite increase in firepower, but as you noticed, every single shot I laid on them, they had a stun animation, so it has incredible stopping power as well, and could potentially stun lock enemies. So, really nice feature, and I personally recommend you try to get enhanced ammo for your handgun as quickly as possible, because it's pretty nice with that ammunition. It's even viable to use against Nemesis at that point, because it does give him a stun animation every time you shoot him as well. All right. Well, that is ultimately going to conclude the M92F handgun, also known as the Samurai Edge. Now, 
now for the next handgun, what's called the Mercs handgun. Sigpro SP2009. It's mainly made of plastic and is very light. It uses 9mm parabellum rounds. All right, now this is the first SIG to be featured in the Resident Evil franchise, just a little note. And of course, it is based off the real life SIG Pro SP 2009. There you go. And if you notice, I don't have enhanced ammo along with this one. That's because Carlos can't use the enhanced ammo with the SIG Pro. However, there is another character that can. Nikolai also has it in his loadout when you play as him in the Mercenaries. And check out this little thing he does if you select him. Let's go ahead and check out the handgun and Carlos' the hands. There you go. Looking really nice. And let's get his pose with it, because he has one too. There you go, crossing his arms. And now let's actually test it out. Nice. All right, now let's do the quick shot maneuver with him. There we go. So now let's go ahead and test this handgun on a set of zombies. All right, so it took three to nine shots with the Sig Pro to take down these zombies in the library. That grounded one, I would have loved to test it on it as well, but it caught my leg, so it got a head smash. But anyway, that's pretty typical for a handgun. Not much different from the M92F in terms of damage points. For all I know, it has the same amount of damage points. That's something I really never have and probably never will care to research that deep into. Because once again, I'm just showing you the weapons of the game. I'm not giving you the most specific damage point to health point ratios here. That's not important. Just so we're clear. All right, so that's gonna end the Sig Pro with regular bullets. However, it can also receive the enhanced bullets, but like I said, Carlos can't do it. So now, I'm gonna switch over to someone who can. All right, so I am in the Mercenaries playing as Nikolai right now because he does get Merc's handgun as well, being a mercenary himself. And one of the civilian drops, the second one to be precise, will give you enhanced handgun bullets. So let's check it out real quick. Enhanced Sig Pro. It is loaded with enhanced 9mm parabellum rounds. Just as lame as the M92F description. Alrighty. So, let's review the Sig Pro with enhanced ammunition in the same exact spot as the other video that I've done before. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and test it on some zombies. I've done enough tests to confirm that it will also take between two to four shots with the enhanced ammo for the Sig Pro to take down zombies. Alrighty, people. So that's gonna conclude the Sig Pro SP2009 handgun with both ammo types. Get away! Another guinea pig was still alive. Don't shoot! No! <laughs> You're still wandering around, discussing my bonus. What you eliminated for your retirement. All right, now for the next and last pistol of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. So, right now it's in pieces, and there's a reason for that. 
First you got parts A. A set of weapon parts, a scope, and a slide. A weapon cannot be made from these parts alone. No shit. <laughs> All right. Now we go parts B. A set of weapon parts, a frame, and a magazine. The same. This is pretty nice for newcomers to learn about individual parts of guns. Not bad. To get this pistol, you have to play in hard or heavy mode and defeat Nemesis at least twice to where he gives you two drops after defeating him. Once you have two drops and you get these two parts, you can combine them and you get the Eagle 6.0. STI Eagle 6.0, a custom made gun for competitions. It uses 9mm Parabellum rounds. Alright, it's a really cool looking pistol, I have to admit, especially with the scope on top of it. And I love the purple color. Now, this is based off the real life STI Edge, right here. Now, it's worth mentioning that Carlos can use the Eagle 6.0 if you play as him in the Mercenaries. So, one unfortunate fact about this is this pistol cannot use the enhanced handgun ammo. That's why I don't even have it in my inventory. It's an unfortunate fact, so you have to make a compromise whether you want to use the Eagle 6.0 with regular ammunition or the enhanced M92F. Personally, when it comes to regular ammunition, once you get your hands on this, you best use it. There's absolutely no reason to use the regular handgun over this once you have it. Because, as you'll see, this has some improved statistics. So let's go ahead and equip it. Check it out in-game. Here it is. Nice. Of course, we'll get Jill's pose with it. Nice. Alright, and let's go ahead and test it out. Look at that speed. So that is the primary reason you really should use this over the regular handgun, because the firing speed as well as the reload is much faster, and the scope actually does provide a function in this game, as you see later when I go over the enemy testing. But first, I don't think I could do a quick shot with this considering it already fires pretty fast. I think the fire rate is as fast as you can fire it, because there's no break in animation as soon as you release the aim button. So, with that said, now let's go ahead and test it on some zombies, and hopefully I get to achieve why the scope is so special. Alright, so, it took between 4 and 7 shots to defeat these zombies with the Eagle 6.0. Now, what I was hoping what would happen, unfortunately, didn't happen for any of those zombies. So I'm gonna have to reset this point and show you some headshots with this thing. There we go. Damn, that was juicy. Woo! Another one. Oh! So yes, this gun has critical chance, and when it happens, it's pretty epic, as always. Alrighty, people, that's gonna go ahead and conclude the Eagle 6.0, since once again, it cannot use enhanced bullets. And that's gonna conclude all the pistols of the game. Now, before we move on to the next weapon category, I got something special to show you guys. This is something I did manage to show in the OG review. So, in this game, another new mechanic is dodging. And one of the dodges that both Jill, Carlos, or any of the characters really can perform is a rolling dodge. And the cool thing about that is if you have any sort of pistol equipped when you do the rolling dodge, you get the special feature where you quick fire the weapon. So let's go ahead and show that animation with all three pistols and all of the different ammunition. This is going to be cool. Ah! <laughs> 
That's a cool maneuver and all, but it's worth noting that it's actually not very good to do that with the Eagle 6.0 because the fire rate actually decreases when you do that maneuver. It's slightly slower, so just keep that in mind when doing the rolling dodge with the Eagle. All right, so that's going to conclude all of the handguns. You saw the rolling animation with all of them and with all the characters that could use them at the same time. So there you go. All right, increasing the fire rate in this weapon showcase. We're moving into the machine guns. The first one is the assault rifle. Now, I believe this is the first actual assault rifle in this series. Every machine gun we've seen prior has been classified as a submachine gun or a heavy machine gun or whatnot. But I think this is the first official assault rifle. So first, let's go over the ammunition, the assault rifle bullets, 556 millimeter NATO rounds army bullets for the assault rifle used for m4a1 all right now i'm pretty sure that's actually accurate 556 millimeter nato rounds i've heard of that many many times like in my lifetime now let's go over the actual weapon the assault rifle m4a1 assault rifle the gun is set in auto mode it uses 556 millimeter nato rounds all right now as you notice there's a fourth option here auto or manual this switches how you fire the weapon. You could either have automatic or three round burst manual. Now, this of course is based off the real life Colt M4A1 carbine. As I mentioned earlier, when I was going over the handgun, in easy mode or light mode, Jill starts straight off with the assault rifle. And once you make it to an item box, there's also ammunition for the assault rifle stored there. And playing in easy or light mode is the only way to get assault rifle ammo for both Jill and Carlos. When you switch over to Carlos, he'll have one wad of ammo available for him. Now, if you play in hard or heavy mode, you can still get the assault rifle just way later. What you have to do is you have to defeat Nemesis pretty much every time you come across him. Enough times to where he drops you an item seven times. On his seventh drop, if you're playing a vanilla new game, on hard mode that is, he will drop you an assault rifle. Now, if you're playing on New Game Plus, just to mention, what he'll drop instead is a pack of infinite bullets for which you can combine with any weapon to make it infinite ammo. And the final, most rewarding way to get the assault rifle is to buy it from the mercenary shop. It'll cost you $2,000. Once you get this, you have it in the main game with infinite ammo. Carlos also has the assault rifle in his loadout when you play as him in the mercenaries. And he also has a special animation. Check this out. All right, so here's Carlos holding it in game. I decided to use him to present this weapon since it's his main. Looking really nice, I have to admit. And let's see him do a pose with it as well. There it is. Very similar to Chris's pose with shotguns and two-handed weapons. I like it. He just doesn't tap it on his shoulder. All right, so I'm going to have to test out in both modes. Let's start in auto mode for like an automatic assault rifle. Now let's switch over to manual mode and fire it that way. Sweet. Now, in manual mode, I could easily do a quick fire maneuver. Check this out. It's almost as if you're firing auto regardless of the burst function. 
Now, if I switch back to auto mode, you can't really do quick fire with this because it's automatic. However, if you manage to tap the fire button fast enough, you can get little hints of faster firing. Let me try to demonstrate that. Yeah, so you technically can get faster firing than what allows here if you have fast enough fingers. I'm sure someone with a modded controller who has one of the buttons fitted with rapid fire could really exploit how fast this thing could really fire. Unfortunately, I don't have a tool like that, so I can't show you, but that would be a sight to behold. So, we're gonna test the assault rifle on zombies as well, because as usual, machine guns per bullet tend to be weaker than handguns, so it's just best that I stick with that enemy, with machine guns. Alright, first we'll start in auto mode. Alright, so amongst four different zombies, including a floored one, which doesn't seem to make a difference because it took roughly the same amount of shots, I took between 7 and 11 individual rifle rounds to defeat these zombies. Now, just something to note, the assault rifle is measured in percentage rather than individual rounds, just like the submachine gun from Resident Evil 2, and it is 3 rounds per percent. So that being said, if it took 7 to 11 individual rounds, then that roughly equates between 2 and 3% on the low end and 3 to 4% on the high end. All right, now let's try again, but in manual mode and see if it makes much of a difference. <laughs> Okay, so a couple of those tests, especially when I defeated the female zombie, I want to say I did like four or five trigger pulls there, so it was between like 12 and 15 individual rounds. And then this floor zombie, I know for sure, took 12 individual rounds. So there's not a huge difference between auto and manual mode when it comes to damage points, although just from that test alone, it seems like manual might take a little long. Well, in all circumstance, manual is going to take you longer to defeat enemies compared to that auto fire. So depends on preference. In my own experience, though, if you do the quick fire technique with manual mode, you could almost get better results in terms of damage. I've been able to defeat Nemesis relatively quickly by using that technique in manual mode with assault rifles. That's just me though. All right, well, I don't really have much else to say about this assault rifle, so we're gonna go ahead and conclude it right here. Any objections to my playing hero this time? What are you doing? Time job. All 
Alright, now for the next and last machine gun, the Gatling gun. This is the same exact Gatling gun from Resident Evil 2. So let's check it out here. A powerful weapon that enables you to scatter bullets with single trigger action. Alright, a slightly different description from Resident Evil 2. So just like RE2, this isn't specifically based on any weapon, although it's hard to say that it's not inspired by the M134 minigun. Now the Gatling gun is strictly an unlockable in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. The only way you can get it with either Jill or Carlos is to purchase it from the mercenary's shop for $3,000. Once you do this, it'll be in the item box of both Jill and Carlos. All right. Now here Jill is in the game with it. It's kind of ridiculous she can hold it one-handed considering what it could be inspired by. And let's go ahead and fire it. <laughs> All right. Yep, it operates exactly the same as the previous game. Nothing we haven't seen before. So let's go ahead and test it on some zombies. Alright, amongst the five zombies, it appeared to have taken between four and seven shots from the Gatling gun to defeat them. Again, in heavy or hard mode, in the NTSC version at least. And yeah, pretty typical, it is more powerful than the assault rifle. Realistically, you're not gonna fire machine guns one bullet at a time like that. So, let me show you guys what proper usage looks like with the Gatling gun at least. <laughs> So yeah, that's how you would properly use the Gatling gun. Alrighty people, that's gonna be it for the Gatling gun, as well as all machine guns.